Okay, YouTube, we're back. So I went over the basic mods that I put on the bike. I want to tell you more about how I did it. I'm going to start with the power system. Like I said, I originally added a 90 amp alternator that died right away. Went back to the factory for right now, and we'll still work that out in the future. But what I did was brought the 5 amp auxiliary circuit from the OEM fuse box up and used it for a switch leg on this relay. The relay itself is switching power directly from the battery, feeding it around to the fuse box, and that's feeding my six circuits all with a dedicated ground going back to the battery. So all this power is not coming through the OEM circuits or the OEM fuse box. Again, I brought six circuits, and actually there was a seventh in my wire harness that I made. Number seven went to the top auxiliary terminals on my OEM fuse box. And sorry, my tablet doesn't focus as quickly as a phone. But circuit number two is up here, and this is what I'm using for the sound system. It's branched between the grip heaters, which needed seven amps according to the manufacturer, and this double USB port, which is carrying the little Bluetooth device and then the wire splitter, the audio wire splitter on the 3.5 millimeter jacks. It's also picking up the USB port that's built, sorry, into the actual phone holder on the left handlebar side. So when I'm writing and using my iPod, it's being charged the whole time. There's the audio cable on top, and the USB port is around the back of the phone holder, comes around, powers up the iPod. Whenever I'm driving, I'm charging. And actually, it's still playing from before. That's what the one circuit on that side is doing. The other circuits are here, or three of the other circuits are here on this side. These parts are all cheap. Most of them were under $20 on Amazon. This side is carrying the two switches. One is right now running my auxiliary lighting. This switch, which came with the seat heaters, obviously seat heat. This one right now is a spare. Don't have a job for it yet. Haven't decided what to do with it yet. Voltmeter, illuminated cigarette lighter. Here's where people are going to talk a lot of smack. In order to accommodate all this and make it easier for me in the future... I did eliminate the pocket. I just cut the bottom of the pocket out, kept the top section of it in order to mount the plate or the cover to keep it mounted. But there's all my circuits. They're color-coded. They're numbered. They're all on disconnects. I can take them apart and put them back together by just snapping and unsnapping locks. So... What we did was we started in the back. It took about 120 feet of 12-gauge wire. Didn't have any of the crimps or markings on it. it had the, the, number, the wires labeled by circuit and by ground. I ran it out. The factory holes that are already in the bottom of the trunk compartment with corks in them. What they're there for, I'm assuming just drainage and if you ever wanted to do anything weird and unusual. Obviously, we went that route and did weird and unusual things. So, they go out the bottom. Can't get that open right now. They go under the seat. At mid-frame, they separate. Dropped off the switch leg for the relay. The spare circuit, which is circuit 6 on the fuse box, and circuit 5, which is the, the circuit that's picking up the rear seat heat switch and the double USB port for the passenger. On the left, on the right side of the fairings, we're picking up three circuits. One is dedicated to the cigarette lighter just because it's a high draw item making heat. One is going to the seat heater and the third is picking up kind of everything else in the area, the voltmeter and the two switches. The two the one switch is only running 40 watts of LED, 20 per lamp, and then the small show chrome lights. So none of it is under a huge load. That's how I did the electrical wiring. I just basically routed it, had the seat off, 
had the middle section of the, the fairing and top deck off, routed it around the side. It goes right past the gas cap. And actually, you can even see my harness down in there. But it's the one, it's a nice, new, clean harness. goes right by everything, not interfering with anything. doesn't seem to be in a particularly dangerous place. But that's how I did it. Like I say, all of the parts total less than $500. And it allows the bike to do everything that a modern bike can basically do except for fuel injection. So have fun with it. Any questions, just ask. Take care.